Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a real world problem that I ran into, and we'll walk through how to write a Python script to solve this. So I've done videos like this before, and everyone seemed to find them useful. Now, the difference between these videos and my normal videos is that I'm not gonna go into as much uh, step-by-step detail of every little step. I'm just gonna walk through how I came up with a solution, and you can follow along. So here's what I want to write a script to do. So some of you may not know this, but for anyone who contributes to this channel through Patreon, I list every everyone on my website's uh, contributors page as a small way of saying thanks. Well, the problem that I'm running into, and it's a great problem to have, is that the contributors are getting up into the numbers where it's hard to keep track of who I've added to the site and who I haven't. So I want to automate this process with Python so that I don't ever miss anyone. And luckily, Patreon provides a downloadable CSV file of all the contributors, which will make it easy to automate this process. So if you don't know what CSV files are, it stands for comma separated values. And basically, CSV files allow us to put data into a plain text file and use some type of delimiter, which is usually a comma, to separate the different fields. So in this video, we'll be learning how to use the CSV module to parse the CSV file, count the contributors, and then put their names into an HTML unordered list that I can drop into my website. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, first of all, I don't want to expose anyone's information here. So the CSV file I'm going to be using for this video uh, takes out all of everyone's personal information and it just has fake names instead of the real names. But other than the names being fake, this is almost identical to the file that I downloaded from Patreon. So I'm going to open up this file. It's called patrons.csv. And when I first open up this file, there are a couple of things that pop out to me when I first see this. So first of all, our first row is our headers. And so we can see that it says that the information in this file is going to be first name, last name, email, pledge, lifetime, status, country, and start. Now, I really don't know what all those fields mean, but basically I'm only concerned with the first name and last name, so that's okay. Um, also, I noticed that there are a couple of lines here after the header that aren't actual data. It's just a line explaining uh, the people below this line are the ones who've said that they don't mind being listed on the website as a contributor, and then it looks like the actual people start on line five here. Now on Patreon, you can also opt out of rewards. So there's likely a line in this CSV file that is a cutoff for people who said that they only want to contribute but don't want to be listed on the website. And actually, if we look down here at line 35, uh, we can see that cutoff point where it says that the people uh, listed below this point do not want the reward and don't want to be listed on the website. Okay, so now we have a basic idea of the data that we want to capture. So now let's go ahead and start coding this. So in the same directory, I have a blank file here called parsecsv.py, and I'm going to open that up. Now, first thing I'm going to do is import the CSV module. And you may lo have looked at that CSV file and thought that, hey, that doesn't look difficult to parse. So why not just use the split method on each line of the file to get that information? And it's true that you could do that, but the CSV module just makes parsing these files so much easier. So for example, if someone put a comma or something in their name for some reason, then we wouldn't want to split on that. And also the CSV uh, module will handle new lines and everything like that and it just takes all the guesswork out of working with things like this so we're going to use the CSV module okay now I know that my end goal is to output an HTML unordered list so I'm going to create an HTML output variable and set this to an empty string for now and we'll populate that as we go and I also know that I want to capture all the names of everyone that I want to add to that output so I'm going to create an empty list of the names Okay, so now let's open up our CSV file just like we would open up any other file. So we're going to use a context manager here, and we're going to say with open, and this is called patrons.csv, and we want to read this file, so we're going to pass in an R there, and we'll just call this a data file. Now I'm going to show you two different ways to parse the CSV file. First, I'll show you the most common, and then I'll show you my preferred method. So the first way we'll do this is with a CSV reader. Um, so I will say CSV data equals CSV dot reader, and now we're going to pass in that data file. And actually, let me make this text a little bit bigger here just so everyone can see as we're going along. I think that's better. So that reader method should have parsed the CSV file and put the data into our CSV data variable. So let's print out 
what we have so far to make sure that it looks right. So I'm going to come down a couple of lines here and just print out CSV data and run that. Okay, so right now we just get this CSV reader object. Now you may have been expecting all of our CSV data. Now the data is there, but this object is an iterable and behaves like a generator. And what that means is that we have to loop over it to get each line. So you can either do that line by line, or you can just convert it to a list and get all that data at once. So if we converted this to a list and printed it out, then we can see that it prints out a lot of information here in list form. Now it's not the easiest to read, but it looks like our data, so it's a good start. So now let's actually print it out line by line so we can see this a little bit better. So to do this, we can say for line in CSV data, and now we're just going to print out each line and run that. And when we run that, we can see that it is a lot easier to read. So if we scroll up to the top and look at the first two lines, we can see that the first line has the headers, and we really don't need those other than to know which index each field is located. So the first name is at index zero, and the last name is at index one. And it looks like the second line is the line uh, telling us that these names uh, we want to put on the website. And then the third line is the first person uh, with the name John Doe. So we really don't need these first two lines here. We just want to get the names of the people. So if anyone has seen my video on generators, we can actually step over values in an iterable by calling next. So let's call next on our CSV data twice before printing out this loop. So we'll just say next CSV data. Then we will copy that and paste it in again. Now we don't need to capture the output from these in any variables, we just want to throw them away. So now if we run this and scroll back up to the top, then we can see that now our first line is the first person of John Doe. Um, okay, so great. Now let's remove our print statement. Well, actually before we do that, um, it's not obvious why we're running next twice on the CSV data here. So it's important to comment non-obvious stuff like this uh, while we're going along, um, not only for other people, but for yourself also. So you could come back to this code in a few weeks and have no idea why we ran these two lines here. So let's just go ahead and make a comment that says, uh, we don't want headers or first line of bad data. Okay, so within our loop here, we're looping over every person in the CSV file. Now remember that the first name is index zero and the last name is index one. So let's go ahead and add each name to our list of names that we created at the top. Now to do this, we'll say names.append. Now we want to append the a string of the first name space last name. And to do this, I'm just going to use an F string and then these uh, braces for a placeholder and we'll say line and then index of zero for the first name then a space and then another uh, bracket for the placeholder and then index of one for the last name now like I've said if you've never seen a string with an F in the front like this this is called an F string and they're new to Python 3.6 so if you're not using 3.6 or later then this isn't going to work for you you'll have to use a regular uh, string dot format now I'm really liking these F strings so far and basically a it's a much simpler way of doing string formatting so if you'd like to see more about them then you can watch my video on strings where I go more in depth into all the different ways to format strings but basically all we're saying here is that we want a string uh, with the value at index zero of the line, which is the first name, and then a space, and then the value at index one of the line, which is the last name. Okay, and now that we've appended those, let's print out all the names that were appended to that list. Uh, since that's a global variable, we can print that outside of our context manager all the way down here at the bottom. So we're going to go down to the bottom, and we'll say for name and names, and then we will just print out the name. Okay, so this is looking good. It looks like we have the first names and the last names. Now, if we scroll through our names here, then we can see that one kind of sticks out. And this is that no reward value. So if you remember, there are names in this list who opted out and didn't want to be included. So every name after this no reward value here uh, shouldn't be added to our list. Well, if we look back at our original CSV file here, 
we can see that this no reward line has a comma after no reward. So this should get parsed as a first name. So let's add in a check for a first name of no reward, and then we'll break out of our loop as soon as we see that value. So within our loop here, uh, we will say if the index zero, which should be the first name, is equal to no reward, then we are just going to break out of that loop. Now, before I run this, uh, we should note that the name before no reward over here in our file is Maggie Jefferson. So when we rerun this, uh, this will hopefully be the last name in our list of names. So I'll go ahead and rerun this. And when we rerun that, we can see that this fake name down here of Maggie Jefferson is the last name in the list. So that works. Okay, so now that we've tested to make sure that our names are right, we can go ahead and just remove that list where we're printing, or that loop where we're printing out all the names. Now we're pretty close to being done here, so the hard part is over. Now we just need to get these names into an HTML unordered list so that I can drop them into the site. So first, on the site, I'd like to list how many supporters there are. So we'll first add that to our HTML output with paragraph tags. And to count how many there are, uh, we can just use the length of our names list. So I'm going to say HTML output uh, plus equals because we want to append to this. And then I'm just going to use uh, another format string here um, to put in these values. Okay, so like I said, I used another F string here, and we're using uh, these HTML paragraph tags here that we're adding in. Now, the only Python data that I'm adding in is um, the length of the names of that names list. So when this gets printed out, it should substitute the actual number there. So just to make sure, let's go ahead and print out this HTML output. So print HTML output, and I'll run that. Okay, so apparently there are 30 people in that names list. So now let's create our HTML unordered list with each name. So we'll add an unordered list to our HTML output, and I'll do this above where we're printing that output. So I'll say HTML output plus equals, and then an unordered list in Python. Now I'm gonna put a new line there first. An unordered list is uh, this UL tag. Now that new line that I added in will just make it a lot easier to read when we actually print this out. So now let's loop through all of our names and add each one to an HTML list item. Um, so if you aren't familiar with HTML, then don't worry about it too much. Uh, it's more about the process of just automating this process that we're after here. So uh, right here we'll say for name and names, and now we want to add each one to that HTML output. So we'll say HTML output plus equals. Okay, and this is another F string here. So first we're putting in a new line with a backslash in, and then we're putting in a tab with the backslash T. And then the list item is this li tag here. And then we're putting the name, this is the Python um, variable that we're using, it's gonna substitute this out. And then in HTML, these forward slashes close out an HTML element. So we're closing out that list item. Okay, and now after we have all those list items there outside of our loop, we're going to have to close off the entire list altogether. So we'll say HTML output plus equals, and we'll close off that list item with a forward slash UL. And let's not forget to put in a new line there at the beginning just to clean up how this prints out. Okay, so now let's print this out and see what everything looks like. So I will raise our uh, output here. Okay, so this is looking good. So at this point, I think that this is the exact output that we wanted. So at this point, we could be done. But I wanted to show you one more thing. Um, I told you that I'd show you one more way to parse the CSV file that I prefer more than using the reader method. And what I prefer is to use the dictionary reader. And we can use this by saying dict reader. Now the difference between the reader and the dictionary reader is that the dictionary reader turns each line into a dictionary instead of a list. And the dictionary has each field as a key and then the data as the values. So let me just loop through and print out these values so you can see what this looks like. 
So first let me just comment out these lines where we're doing all of our looping and everything. And I'm also going to comment out the HTML output for now. And we're going to see what the output of this dictionary reader looks like. And to do this, we'll say for item in CSV data. And then we will just print out each item. So let's run that. Okay, now at first glance, this looks a little messy, uh, especially since my text is so large here, but each of these lines is an ordered dictionary. So the first line with the field names is no longer here. Now those are being used as keys for the dictionaries. So the first uh, throwaway value is still here as far as this being the description of the reward line. So this first ordered dictionary here is our first line. And if we look at our second item, now this is our first person because we can see this is that uh, John Doe person. So now instead of accessing index zero for the first name and index one for the last name, now we can access those directly through the first name and last name keys. And I think that that is a lot more readable for anyone looking at your code. So now to get this working again, uh, we're going to get rid of this loop where we just printed everything out. And now we'll uncomment out all of the uh, logic here. Okay, and now that the headers are no longer included in the output, uh, we only want to skip over that one first value. And let's see, and we can fix our comment here and just say we don't want first line of bad data. And now instead of using index uh, where we access the items, we can now use the keys of first name and last name. So now we're going to say if the first name is equal to no reward, and then we want to append the first name and append the last name. Okay, and now let's go down here and uncomment out this HTML output and see if this works. So now I'll go ahead and rerun this. And if we scroll up, we have Maggie Jefferson here at the bottom. And if we scroll up, we can see that there's still 30 contributors and John Doe is our first one. So that seems to be correct. Okay, so it looks like our results are good. Uh, so it took a little while to write this script, but now it's going to save a, lot, a ton of time by automating this in the future and will also prevent me from making any mistakes. So one reason that I like to show you all these quick scripts that can automate a repetitive task is just to show how you can save a lot of time by writing a very simple script. I mean, this script here is only 26 lines and it's going to save us a lot of time. And I also want to show that you don't need to overthink these one-off scripts too much. Uh, so I could probably come into the script and add error checking and also some kind of object-oriented approach to this. But for what I want to use the script for, I really don't need it to be overly complicated. So if you have some problems that you think that you can automate, then just give it a shot and don't think too much about how performant or clean everything is. Um, it's just a great way to learn is uh, just by doing and experimenting. Now, if any of you are uh, interested in a more detailed look at parsing CSV files and writing CSV files, then I am putting together a video specifically on reading and writing CSV files that I'm going to record very soon. So be on the lookout for that. Okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. I hope that you all found it useful. And if anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also, it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon, and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos, and thank you all for watching.